Hi. To some degree, then, what happens to your film will be out of your control. Legion are the stories of filmmakers who gave their precious cargo to a sales outfit only for the project uh, marketing to be mishandled or the film missold or not sold at all by a company that had other bigger fish to fry, were lazy or didn't care for it. Either way, the film disappeared into the abyss, never to be heard of again. All you can do is cover everything that is yours to cover. Make the film good, bring it in on schedule and on budget. Do all your paperwork. Create as much buzz as you can. I'll go a little more into that a bit further on in the course. Then do your due diligence. The company you're thinking of to hire and sell your film, too often exhausted by the trial of making, of shooting, then post-producing your film, the filmmaker arrives exhausted at the feet of the distributor. They then get hung, drawn and quartered by the deal and never see a penny in profits. The landscape has changed beyond recognition, but the result is still extraordinarily similar. You're sat there, ignorant, exhausted and ripe for the picking. Industry screenings are a remarkable thing. You pay a few hundred to hire out a screening room in the middle of town and invite as many sales and distribution companies as you can. Many won't turn up and those that do will sit there stony-faced regardless of the fare they're looking at. This is all a game. If the film is any good, they're going to want it and want it bad. But they can't let you know that nor can they let any of their competitors know that either. So what follows is a mad charade of a bunch of guys sitting motionless in the screening, all the while taking sideways glances at their competition, wondering and trying to gauge whether they like it, because if they do, then they need to get in first. Doing the screening at Cannes was an education too, and I don't recommend it to any filmmaker invested in their film. It consisted of a very empty screening room with a few guys dotted about and then about 10 minutes in, people already starting to drift out. People chatting amongst themselves, eyes glued to their phones. It's heartbreaking and you're sitting there pulling your hair out, wondering what on earth you did wrong, how you got it so wrong. But you can't afford to go down that rabbit hole. Of course, the good news was that someone sat there and watched their way through, then came over and did the deal there and then standing at the side of the screen whilst the end titles rolled. Don't be the producer director for that reason alone. Let the producer go and do that bit. It's grim. So what's your takeaway? Just know that it's a really long, hard slog. It's three mountains, not one. But you can't see the other two due to the one in front of you, the shoot. Behind that is the post-production mountain. And beyond that is the marketing one. Be prepared for all three. Don't just look at the first one and think, I just need to do that. If I can just do that, then everything will fall into place because that type of thinking leads to disaster. Secondly, be aware you need a fair wind, a dollop of luck. You hear it all the time with success stories, with a flush lead actor or producer talking about the extraordinary piece of luck that lifted them up, took them to the heights. Likewise, there are any number of riders that fell over one of the many hedges and yet at the same time not give a damn and blast your way forward, whatever happens. Thereafter, it's in the lap of the gods. You've got to view it as your calling card. Of course, if anything happens and it then takes off, then surf the wave, enjoy yourself, allow yourself to bask in that light. But the default mode should really be that it's a calling card and no more. And that way, if anything good does happen, it's an unexpected bonus. For me, Offending Angels worked out as a calling card, but not at all in the way I expected. I didn't get another film out of it, not immediately, nor a paying gig as a director, but it did get me into one of the best film schools in the world, and for that I'm grateful. But it was also a brilliant film school in and of itself. You always learn best by doing. 